Hi everybody, Richard Tromans here from Artificial Lawyer. Uh, we're doing another ALTV product walkthrough. Uh, this time it's Aora. Uh, to tell us a bit more about it is Gordon McKenzie. Hey Gordon, how are you doing? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about the product, um, a bit about the company, and then let's get on to the walkthrough. But first of all, tell us about yourself and uh, the company. Hi, uh, yeah, my name is Gordon McKenzie. I'm the, one of the CTO and one of the co-founders of Aora. We are a London-based company, um, and uh, we are essentially building a AI-assisted co-pilot application for lawyers to um, assist them with revenue management. Fantastic. Interesting. Interesting. And uh, how long have you been going for? About 18 months, is that right? That's right, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, excellent. Well, let's get into the, the product walkthrough, which, uh, and as people can see below, got this very interesting graphic. Uh, so Gordon's going to give us a bit of a walkthrough, and then we'll do some Q&A at the end. But uh, please, Gordon, take it away. Thank you. Um, so what, this is kind of a bird's eye view of the overall product and how it works. And then we're going to take a deeper dive into the kind of outputs that it produces and how lawyers interact with it. So it all starts off with data. So we can connect to any of the major practice management systems um, through any method. Um, and then once the data is transferred to over, over to us, we then take over and start processing it. So we clean the data, structure it, and then we start to analyze it using a number of um, methods that we've built in-house. So the key things that we're looking for is really you can think of this mid part as the kind of brain. This is like Imagine being able to give every lawyer their own virtual CFO and a team of analysts who are crunching through all of the billing data, the time team data, um, the collections data, and finding um, opportunities to improve revenue. That could be missing uh, debt that's slipped through the cracks. It could be work that's being sat on and is not being billed. It could be um, evidence that uh, budgets are being breached or that uh, work is being done that's out of the original scope that's being agreed with the client. And what we do then is once we find this through crunching data, we uh, essentially want to notify the lawyer, bring it into their workflow, um, and then present them with all the data they need to make a decision so that the lawyer is still in control, um, but they're being empowered with summarized and processed data that they're not ordinarily getting from their systems that they have. Uh, they'd have to ordinarily go into this and crunch all the numbers themselves and look at charts, et cetera. Uh, we do that all for them and, and able to make faster and better decisions about their matters from a revenue perspective. So we then send them a notification. I'm going to show you an email example in a minute, but we could also do this through Teams if that was desired. And then they're given an opportunity to then act on those recommendations and that feeds back into the system for us to continually learn um, from uh, interactions that the lawyers make with us. So it's this feedback loop that's really key here um, as to how we continuously try and improve and get better. So I'll have make, take you over to what a typical notification looks looks like. So this would be us sending, this is a demo one, of course, we're using dummy data. Um, this would be a typical uh, email that we could send a lawyer saying that we found some, um, some issues with matters here that require our attention. Uh, and here's some examples here. We found some debt that has slipped through the cracks, or we found evidence that work is being sat on and uh, time has been built up here. And this is a good opportunity to actually start the billing process. So from here, at a quick glance, a lawyer could see this, say, ah, yeah, of course, right, I, I need to do something about that. We then click on this button here, and this then takes them to uh, a web application. The web application looks like this. Um, and again, this is just some demo data, um, but essentially what we've got here is a breakdown of matters. And then within matters, we've got some different um, issues that we've identified that are being flagged to the lawyer for their attention. So let's just take this first example here. Uh, we've got an example here of a matter that we have identified that looks like it's ready for billing. Um, and therefore the um, lawyer should consider issuing an interim bill. The reason for this then is presented here what we try and uh, think of this is like giving the lawyer a, a, like a free course meal to make a decision. We give them the information they need. We've um, analyzed all the data behind the scenes and we've identified that when we compare this to similar matters, um, it looks like this is, this is a matter that can be built. 
Um, and from this, we then give them an easy way to do this in two clicks. Um, so there's lots of ways uh, a bill can be prepared. Sometimes there's lots of humans in the loop. Uh, and it has to cascade through different people in finance or legal support staff. Sometimes it hooks into a new billing system. Uh, what we've got here is an example where um, some member of legal support staff would be um, involved in this and the, um, uh, the partner could assign them and then do that through this process. So if they had a personal assistant assigned, for example, they could action this and uh, this would kick off the billing process for them to review um, and approve and then that could go up to the client. Um, other things that we can do that are quite interesting are we can um, create draft emails as well. So a lot of the time it's really important to keep the client up to date with what's going on or you know, to give them advance warning that uh, there may be a bill uh, about to come. So we can actually uh, empower them to like draft emails really quickly so they can copy this into Outlook and they can edit it if they wish to. And it has all the kind of relevant details filled out for them, uh, ready to go. Um, other things that we can do is enable them to manage their team. So we know that uh, you know, managing matters is a team sport. It may not just be uh, one lawyer involved, there may be uh, other lawyers involved, uh, particularly in large teams where there's lots of associates. Um, the lawyer can then uh, assign this to the relevant person and then they will still have oversight. So the partner can still have oversight, but someone else, i.e. a managing associate, will be taking care of this. And what we'll then see is this will go into their monitor section. So they'll still be able to see what's going on here, but they won't need to actually take action. Someone else will be doing that for them. Um, so the other thing as well is that sometimes that um, we may have identified something. Uh, there may be a reason why this can't be done right now. Uh, we're fully flexible there. They want to push this back and say, actually, no, we can't do this right now. They just give a reason. This goes back into the system, is analyzed, and then we can make better decisions as we go on. Um, I think we've still got a little bit of time left. Um, the other thing that we are increasingly doing is looking at the management side of things. So empowering um, uh, lead partners, for example, in large firms to have a look uh, to see what's going on uh, in, their, in their practice groups. So for example, they can have a look to see um, how different partners are doing with their KPIs. They can break this down and see what's going on in terms of um, uh, the, um, uh, different the different notifications that have been sent out and uh, the different actions that have been taken to give full kind of managerial oversight. Um, so I think that's probably a good overview of the product. Happy to take any questions. Excellent. Thanks, Gordon. Very interesting. And can I just ask uh, you and your team, are you, are you accountants by background? And if you are, why did you end up in the legal world? <laughs> that was a great question. Um, actually, um, Stefan is more of the financial uh, guy, Stefan is my co-founder and CEO. Uh, he um, spent uh, 10 years uh, in uh, a mixture of investment banking, particularly M&A, uh, and then moved over to the buy side. So he's the one with the financial background. Um, interestingly, um, I come from a um, sort of academic and healthcare background. I did a PhD in decision making uh, mm. technology uh, using machine learning and economic modeling. Um, so there's a bit of overlap there. But then finally, also our um, first employee, our lead engineer, Kevin, he has a PhD in computational physics uh, from Cambridge. So between us, there's a lot of kind of interest in numbers and using numbers to make better decisions. Gotcha, gotcha. Can you just go back to that first slide, the animation? Yeah, sure. Just a couple of questions I'll ask about that, and then we'll we'll wrap up quickly after that. So just, yeah, I'm sure everybody who was staring at that was looking at the bit in the middle where it says adaptive AI. What kind of AI are you using? You're using an LLM. This is more old-fashioned machine learning, NLP. This is something else. What What, what is the adaptive AI? Oh, yeah, it's kind of just a, an umbrella term for actually a whole array of different um, algorithms. So it all starts with unsupervised learning. So just looking at patterns of data without having any labels. What I mean by labels is one way to think about it is if you have a picture of a cat, then you'd have a label cat next to it. So that's just pure numbers that we get from systems with no other details. So that's pattern recognition, for example, and grouping of data. The next layer is um, 
uh, supervised learning. So that's where we, over time, um, what happens is as lawyers interact with our system, they essentially label the data. So if they agree with one of the recommendations and they action it, that's a positive mm. signal. Whereas if they disagree, we have like a negative system, uh, signal. So that's another label. And then we're always trying to make sure that we personalize and give the best possible recommendations uh, to lawyers in a format that they desire. So we use systems like reinforcement learning um, that respond to um, are, law are lawyers seeing emails? Are they opening them? Are they visiting the uh, web application to action things? We mm. record everything and we use mm. that to try and adapt the system. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so it, it's, it sounds like it's more, you might say, well, say traditional, not that it was that long ago, but it was more perhaps what we might call, you know, traditional machine learning as opposed to uh, using an LLM to, to handle everything. That's, in, yeah, that's definitely for the, um, this kind of core numerical data analysis and handling the feedback. However, we are increasingly uh, using LLMs in particular for analyzing the unstructured data that law firms have the time narratives that they keep. Um, so in there, there is a, a whole wealth of information around how a matter is progressing. And that's where we're using LLMs. Got you. Got you. Fantastic. And just to wrap up very quickly, if somebody wants to get their hands on this and integrate it, and obviously a law firm's uh, financial you know, software is obviously quite important. Uh, how do they how do they get this in? Yeah, uh, what we do is we have a pilot program whereby we can do um, a uh, an implementation whereby we will figure out how to uh, do the connection, the data connection, and we can um, do it with um, a select practice group, for example, um, and start using this and see what kind of insights we generate and see how this uh, works with lawyers. And then um, we can monitor that very carefully. We have a very good methodology for tracking that. And, um, and then sort of that, we can then roll that, that out to more practice groups. Interesting. And actually, one last thing um, is, could this and the data it uses or and it has access to, could it be used to help model fixed fees for the future? So, you know, you're, this is the past. This is what the future might look like. Would that be possible? Oh, price modeling. Yeah, that's something that's on our roadmap to explore. Mm. Um, that's definitely of interest to us. Um, so, yeah, watch this space. Okay. Yeah. No. Because I'm. Um. I've met quite a few. Um. You know, pricing experts over the years, and you know, the the being able to predict now is, is becoming increasingly important. So. Uh, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, thanks, Gordon. It's really fascinating, and wish you well. And uh, if you want to know more about the company, um, have a look at the links in this story. But uh, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you.